Remember when we were younger, we would hear some interesting tidbit about someone black who had invented something or done something significant in history, and we would wonder aloud, wow, I wonder why they don't teach us that in school. Well, I would argue some decades later that we're in no better position now with regards to our mainstream educational system and what it teaches our young people and our not so young people about our history. You know, Carter G. Woodson, the author of the book, The Miseducation of the Negro, asserts that a man receives two educations, one that is given to him and the other that he gives to himself. Well, we're about to take the long journey into looking into the historical contributions of people of African descent. Where will we begin? I mean, what have we done? What have we contributed to world civilization in the areas of mathematics, science, architecture, astrology, astronomy, medicine? If we wanted to find out, where would we begin? Well, we can begin in the most ancient of days. We can begin with an African, a multi-genius of a man. His name, Imhotep. Imhotep was the first multidimensional character in human history. There was no personality in human history that we can read about, that's written about before Imhotep, a black man. The first person with texture in human history. In other words, everybody before that, that was mentioned, you mentioned the name. You had the name of kings. You had their name but you did not have any details about them. The first person we have details about in history is a black man, Imhotep. And Imhotep was the world's first multi-genius. He was a scientist. He was a priest. He was the world's first physician. He gathered the intellects of his day around him that became the embryo of what later would be the beginning of higher learning. This is the embryo that's going to go into the making of the university. The academy as it operates today operates on this notion of disciplines, that you just look at things from one perspective. Here was Imhotep who looked at things from a multiplicity of perspectives and helped to lay a foundation in ancient Egypt for the development of Africa after his time, even up to the present times. Imhotep built the Step Pyramid as a stairway to heaven for the second king of the third dynasty, Pharaoh Zosier, intended to hold his mummified body. He saw his Pharaoh getting ready to die and decided the way in which Pharaohs were placed at the uh, end was not sufficient for him. He had to die, be placed better than that. So they, he removed the principle of the master bar. This is the box kind of thing, bill and wood uh, portion, of most of it in, in, uh, uh, recessed in the ground. And he said, no, I have to find a material better than this that doesn't rot. And that thus he went to the stone. But how? Nobody has ever, ever done it. There's no such thing a mortar. You don't have steel to keep it together. So he has to uh, envision Thing. He has to put the foundation for this m massive structure uh, for this, the, the, the earth to hold it. And thus, this man, in his architectural wisdom, uh, dealt with stress and strains and of material at that early stage. The first time, remember, he had nobody to follow. Revolutionary in its design, in that it abandoned the traditional boxy, bunker-style mastaba made of dried mud brick, the step pyramid was built to be over 200 feet in height. Encased in smooth white limestone, which reflected the sun's rays, the original structure was an underground burial chamber, some 90 feet deep with a vertical shaft leading to it and hidden in a maze of tunnels with a three-ton piece of granite sealing its entrance to discourage grave robbers. First, he built the one mastaba doesn't look good, he put another one on top of it. Uh, looking better but not good enough, he uh, put it until it looks like a pump cake, uh, I mean a, a lady's uh, wedding cake, and with uh, uh, six tears. To me, there was seven tears, that's my theory, and somehow the top th tear was taken off or forward or whatever it happened. Because to me, I don't see the logic 
to build six tiers. Why? What does the six relate to? Well, seven will be for one for each day, you know, or so forth. Uh, um, and then uh, this man would uh, uh, establish the first school system around this. Uh, it will, it, will, it will start an organization which is today called Freemasonry, Art Fellows, uh, Elks, and uh, things like that. Even the Greeks would copy from it, and all these so called uh, fraternities and fraternities came from there. The large, large uh, Delphi, Greece's first large, would come from the development which Inhotep caused to be, because the men, the, the Masons who worked there, uh, created an organization with men in different degree to handle different aspects of the building of this, and thus started what we today call Freemasonry and so forth. Imhotep's brilliance was not limited to architecture alone. The builder of the world's first colossal stone structure was also gifted in many other areas as well. He was a scientist, priest, educator, scribe, poet, astronomer, and the Pharaoh's Grand Vizier. But arguably, his greatest contribution was in the science of medicine, that of being the world's first physician. He had such a profound impact on the idea of a, what is a scientist, what is a thinker. You see, Imhotep was a quintessential scientist. Not only was he the architect of the first massive stone building in history, the Step Pyramid of Saqqara, but he also cataloged thousands of medicinal uses of plants. Not he didn't just sit and list plants. He said, this plant is used to help cure this. So you put this plant on your eye, if your bee stings you on your eye. You take this plant, put it on an open wound, you know, if this wound is taken. You take this plant, if you're suffering from indigestion, you take this 3,000 medicinal uses of plants. Historically, students who graduated from medical school take the Hippocratic Oath, named after Hippocrates, the recognized father of medicine. But is he the true father of medicine, or is it really the African Imhotep? We are taught that Hippocrates, from, from a Western perspective, was the father of medicine. And of course, from a Western perspective, he may be in, in that sense, because people do tend to look at it from their own narrow perspective. But Imhotep was before Hippocrates and helped to lay the foundation for the kinds of medicine that we do now. One of the main reasons we do go a lot of the nonsense about Hippocrates because we haven't even read what he said. Read what Hippocrates said. He said, I am a child of M. Hotel. He was beholden to this African who lived nearly 2,000 years before he was born. He worshiped at the shrine of M. Hotel. Sir William Oshler, one of the founding physicians of Johns Hopkins Hospital, writes of Imhotep, he was the first figure of a physician to stand out clearly from the midst of antiquity. Indeed he was. Imhotep diagnosed and treated over 200 diseases, 15 diseases of the abdomen, 11 of the bladder, 10 of the rectum, 29 of the eyes, and 18 of the skin, hair, nails, and tongue. Imhotep is believed to have treated tuberculosis, gallstones, appendicitis, gout, and arthritis. He also performed surgery and practiced some dentistry. This is the world's oldest known surgical document, the Edwin C. Smith Papyrus. Edwin Smith was merely a purchaser of precious antiquities. He had no ownership in its genius. That belongs to the African Renaissance man, Imhotep. The Edwin C. Smith Papyrus is a medical book of 48 different surgical procedures written in exquisite detail, dealing with cranial sutures, the external surface of the brain, examination, diagnosis, and treatment of head injuries, fractures of the neck, collarbone, skull, nose, and arm, as well as tumors, cysts, sprains, and dislocations. Imhotep not only made an impression on his pharaoh, Zosier, and the elites of the Third Dynasty, he left a legacy that would last for more than 2,000 years after his death. Europe was not yet born. Greece and Rome were not even on the radar screen. And not only did they sing his praises, ultimately he is the first human being who is deified, that is, made a god, 
He, he was the first human being. Now there were God concepts before him, but these were legendary or mythical. But here's a human being who lives on the earth, just like we live on the earth, walked around on the earth, did his deeds, lived a good life, and years after he died, they built temples in his name, and they took their children to his temple to be healed. The African Imhotep, a commoner at birth, was in death elevated to a deity and worshiped as the supreme healer the one who comes in peace. Asclepius, the god of healing. Imhotep's name would find itself used in a traditional Hippocratic oath, named after Hippocrates. And the most famous saying that he has until this day, eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow you will die.